good people. I guess this video is a bit like AMD's new processors. Better late than never, right? So more than a year and a half after Zen 3 was first launched and right at the end of this generation's life cycle, we're finally getting some new processors and some of them we've been waiting for a really long time. So why now with Zen 4 just right around the corner and why should you even care? I feel like these CPUs are probably going to matter a hell lot more for millions and millions of AMD users than Zen 4, especially when we talk about the much more affordable Ryzen 5 5500 and the 4500 SKUs. Those are what we're covering today because, you know, the affordable stuff gets us really excited and just so much more interesting to look at versus the high, the high end stuff that is normally not very affordable for many. Basically, AMD's rounding out their lineup with a bunch of CPUs a lot of people have been asking for with the 5700X, the 5600, and the 5500. But while the 5700X and the 5600 are basically simply downclocked versions of the current processors, the 5500 is a whole other thing. I mean, based on its six core, 12 thread layout, clock speeds, and TDP, it might look just like a slower 5600, but it's not. Okay, it's not. It's got a lot less cache. It doesn't even have an I.O. die like other Zen 3 CPUs. And unfortunately, it doesn't support PCIe Gen 4. Okay, no Gen 4. That means the Ryzen 5 5500 is based on this thing, the 5600G and its Cezanne core design. The only real difference other than the clock speeds is the G has the integrated graphics, while this one doesn't. <laughs> so it should be pretty obvious the 5500 and the 5600 were absolutely necessary since AMD didn't really have anything with their latest architecture to compete against Alder Lake in the sub like $225 market. That meant the 12100 and the 12400 series were pretty much left on their own. And if anything, they might kind of recapture the value crown. But the other side of this equation is the new, <laughs> okay, not really new, Ryzen 4500 and 4100. Along with the 4600G, they're based on the Zen 2 architecture. And the idea here is to simply offer more cores for less money. And that's super important since I'm sure there's a ton of people who bought the first generation Ryzen 3 processors. So like the 1600X, which was awesome. My personal 1700X and are looking for an upgrade path. But, and this is important, don't assume the new 4000 series processors will beat the 3300X and the 3100X every single time because they won't, but more on that later. So back to the million dollar question, okay? At the end of Zen 3 lifespan, why even bother doing this now? Is it too little too late? We think not. And in this kind of market, I feel like it's never too late. I would actually like to think the 5500 and the 4500 to be like the last hurrah, a sort of lifeline for people who haven't seen any reason to upgrade their older Zen based systems. Because now with the rollout of new BIOSes that support Zen 3 and almost every AMD chipset launched in like the last five years. So these CPUs could be an amazing drop in upgrade for anyone with an A320 onwards, provided there are no compatibility hiccups, of course. So I guess that sets the stage for this review of the Ryzen 5500 and the 4500. So let's see what they're being compared to here. First of all, we wanted to include the four core eight thread Ryzen 3 3300X, which was probably a processor that was <laughs> way too good for AMD since they only released a few dribbles of it. But it's a good example of a 3000 series chip that was launched at around the same price as the Ryzen 5 4500. The Intel i3 12100F is here too, since it also goes for around $115. So it's direct competition for these sort of new CPUs. You also have to remember that the 12100 and the 12400 are a bit different for Alder Lake since they don't actually include any efficiency cores, just the performance type. And speaking of efficiency, let's talk about power consumption, shall we? Because the 4500 and 5500 are some of the most efficient CPUs around right now. And more importantly, their behavior is pretty constant too. Instead of massive spikes, like sometimes we see on Intel processors, these ones end up hitting right around their TDP value and sticking there the whole time. But even though they're technically more efficient from a power consumption standpoint, 
these CPUs actually tend to run a good deal hotter than Intel's. It isn't that they produce more heat, it's just that the thermals are a lot more concentrated, so temperatures end up being higher with the same cooling. So yeah, these things run a bit hot, that means you might want a cooling upgrade, which I might need too for this perfectly placed video sponsor. What makes a CPU cooler different? Well, it starts with the basics, like a direct touch base plate along with nickel plated heat pipes for maximum heat dissipation, a fan that respects your environment without sounding like a jet, an easy installation procedure for both Intel and AMD platforms, and the flexibility to work with different memory modules. But the real deal comes with the presentation of a CPU cooler, and Iceberg Thermal took a completely different direction with their iSleet G3 and G4 series by offering this unique multifaceted design on the exterior shell that looks absolutely sleek, especially in this teal version. These air coolers come in different flavors to fit your style. Learn more about the iSleet series down below. So that rounds up what you need to know about the two new processors and where they land from a spec standpoint. But the performance, well, that's where things get really interesting, okay? Starting with Cinebench and right away, we can see the strength of the six core 12 thread designs versus the 3300X, the 11400F and the 12100F. But then again, the advantages of Zen 3 versus Zen 2 are also there in a pretty big way. The single thread results are not anything unexpected either with Alder Lake dominating, but the 4500 does end up struggling quite a bit against the 3300X here. And yeah, wait till you see what that does to the gaming results, because remember the 3300X and the 4500 are based on the same architecture and their overall clock speeds are not that different. The only thing the 4500 has going for it are four more processing threads. The rest of the tests repeat the same thing over and over again. In heavy full core workloads, the Ryzen 5 4500 simply demolishes the 12100F and even the 11400F again and again. I mean, in most situations, it isn't even close. The 3300X struggles too, since it's trying to compete against designs that simply have more threads. Meanwhile, the separation between it and the 5500 goes from super minimal in a lot of the apps to pretty massive in situations that take advantage of Zen 3's strength. Honestly though, if you use a lot of heavy multi-threaded programs and have a shoestring budget, I'd actually recommend the Ryzen 4500 over the 5500 hands down. Now against the Intel side, the 5500 plays in an interesting space. As a drop-in upgrade for an older AMD system, it's got some legs, but if you're desperate to build a new PC, like right now, it's not worth it. I would actually go with the 12400F since that platform will stick around for much longer while AM4 is sort of at the end of its life. But what about gaming? And well, that's where things end up going <laughs> all messed up, at least for the Ryzen 5 4500. It just gets its ass handed to it in pretty big way, even by the 3300X and the 12100F. And you'll see this in pretty much every game that's CPU limited. So what's exactly going on here? How could it be so strong in real world results, but terrible in gaming? So let me explain. First of all, it's based on an older architecture, which is why it cannot keep up with the 5500. But the bigger problem is actually in the clock speed department. Lower end processors usually get a frequency bump to compensate for their lack of cache and cores. The 3300X is a great example of that. It's also based on the Zen 2 architecture, but its average clock speeds during gaming is much, much higher. So frame rates are in a totally different lead. So basically with the Ryzen 5 4500, you're sacrificing a ton of potential for gaming performance for more threads. But the Ryzen 5 5500 is another matter altogether. It ends up giving pretty decent performance right across the board and trades blows with the 12100F. But you also have to remember that Alder Lake processors are typically a better bet for gaming. So the 12400F may be a bit more expensive at the start, but end up pretty far ahead in most situations too. So on the one hand, we have the Ryzen 5 4500. It gets more cores to the good people, but it's a one trick pony that's amazing in multi-threaded applications. But I would never recommend it for gaming. As for the 5500, well, that one's a bit tougher. With Zen 4 right around the corner, I would not build a brand new system around it. 
right now, unless you're desperate. Plus, there's some pretty good Alder Lake options out there if you want to have a less expensive gaming rig. And also the big benefit is with those new BIOSes for old motherboards. So they've made the 5500 an absolutely amazing drop in upgrades for people rocking the earlier Ryzen 1000 and 2000 series CPUs, especially for gaming applications and, you know, slapping some newer fast memory. And it's a pretty good slam dunk. You know, so that is all you have to know about the new 4500 and the 5500 in the performance department. Again, for all the systems, it's a great consideration. But if you're starting to build a system around it that's brand new, you know, perhaps hold off a little bit or look into Alder Lake and you can check out all our reviews of Alder Lake stuff over here. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Dimitri coming from the good old Montreal office and you good people. CPU responsibly, my friends.